Hi you guys. So it is National Teacher Appreciation Week this week and the official Teacher Appreciation Day is tomorrow. So I thought I would share with you a quick tutorial for a little gift that you can get the teachers in your life. Obviously if you have kids, you know, they have teachers at school and with their extracurricular activities. But as an adult, I feel like I have lots of teachers in my life as well. Um, mentors, and people that kind of help guide me. So I am going to be using this week to pay homage to all of those people as well. So the tutorial that I have for you today is for these really adorable um, bow key fobs. This idea actually comes from Bev at Flamingo Toes. This is her tutorial that I'm sharing with you today. Um, the key fob itself takes hardly any fabric at all. Does this fabric look familiar? <laughs> I have a matching key fob to my um, dress here today. Um, so it doesn't take hardly any fabric, um, which is a great thing because you probably have what you need on hand. The only thing that you probably don't have is this key fob hardware. It is easy to find, or it was for me anyways. Um, I, I saw some at my Joann's, um, but if you have Amazon Prime, I'm gonna link um, an Amazon link down below where you can get these. So let's learn how to make these. Okay, so here's everything that you're going to need to make these key fobs. Um, you are going to need your pattern pieces, and I've just made these out of some um, card stock. I'll leave the measurements in the description box below, but for the main piece of fabric, you need one that's three inches by 10 inches, and for the, interfa for the um, interfacing, you need one that's two inches by 10 inches. Um, you're also going to need some kind of measuring tools. So I've got this hem gauge here, and I've got my OmniGrid ruler here. You'll need a marking tool. You'll need um, a pair of tweezers to make that uh, little bow. You'll need um, some kind of clip. Um, you'll see why later, I suppose. Um, you need bias tape, something that's either matching or coordinating with your fabric. And then you'll need a tailor's clapper in order to get that fold nice and crisp. And then you'll need um, one of these kits. So this is going to be the um, hardware. It's called Key Fob Hardware. Um, I'll have a link down below uh, for where I got these, but they come in different widths and also different finishes. So this one is silver, but they also have like antique bronze and things like that. And this is the tool that you use to close it down. You could use regular pliers. Um, so if you don't have one of these, go ahead and grab your regular pliers. Okay, once you've gathered all of your supplies, your first step is going to be to cut out the interfacing and the fabric that you are going to use using the dimensions that I mentioned earlier. Again, they are also listed in the description box if you need to find them. Um, this is fusible fleece. It is similar to other kinds of interfacing that you've used in that it has the um, like little glue dots on the back side of it um, but the rest of it is kind of like batting I guess in a way or you know if you're familiar with, with what fleece is but that is what it looks like and you want to use this because you want it to kind of be soft and cushiony whenever you're done but basically you just line up the interfacing uh, centering it along the width of the fabric and it's going to be the same length so those the length of the interfacing will match up with the raw edges of the fabric um, but you just you know lay the glue dots on the wrong side of the fabric and you get your iron nice and hot and get some steam going and you just press your iron onto the back side of the fusible fleece holding it there for like three to five seconds and then you know picking up your iron and moving it not moving your iron across it like this um, and you just get it on there nice and good and you can see it's completely adhered to the fabric. Another really good tip, I think Abby's probably mentioned this before, but you know, after you're done pressing your fusible fleece, just let the fabric sit on the ironing board until it's completely cooled and that'll help the glue dots um, kind of adhere to the fabric as well. Okay, so you've got your interfacing um, attached to the back of your fabric and now you're going to fold the ends, the long ends of the fabric over the fusible fleece um, by about half an inch. You wanna kinda just 
fold the fabric over the um, interfacing and you want to press in those sides um, really good so that you get something with kind of folded over edges on this side. So once you've folded in each of the long edges, then you're going to fold the whole thing in on itself. So here was the last step and then you fold this whole thing in on itself so that you've got um, kind of a little bit of a book, I guess. Um, and you want to press this really well. And this is where the tailor's clapper comes in. So once you fold this over and you get your iron and your steam going really good, lay the tailor's clapper on it. And again, let it completely cool while sitting on your ironing board. And that's how you will get these really nice crisp, um, folds in your fabric. You're also going to need a piece of uh, bias tape. You can either use purchased bias tape or you can make your own. Um, I've used, this is the um, double fold um, quarter inch bias tape, but I've used half inch before. Um, but you are going to want the double fold so that it does have like a, a finished side on, a finished edge on each side but this needs to be about seven and a half inches long. Um, and this is what we're gonna use to make our cute little bow. So here we are with our prepared um, strip of fabric and then I've taken the bias tape and I've cut it into three sections. You're gonna need a one inch piece, a two and a half inch piece, and a four inch piece. Again, I'll leave these dimensions in the description box so that you can easily reference them but you're going to leave the four inch piece alone. <clears throat> you're gonna take the two and a half inch piece and what I like to do is I like to fold it in half and just finger press it right there so that you can um, kind of get an idea of where the center is. And then you're going to fold in each of the edges overlapping that center fold that you just made by about a quarter of an inch. And you're going to hold those there. The whole point is to try and get this um, you know, main part of the bow to be about an inch wide. You're going to uh, put this into your sewing machine and I like to put it in this way and ha and just do a wide zigzag stitch that doesn't travel. Um, just kind of tacking these, um, all sandwiching all three of these layers together. And then you're also gonna take your one inch piece and you're gonna fold it over itself and you're gonna sew a very narrow, maybe quarter of an inch um, on sewing the raw edges of this one inch piece together. And when you do that, you will get these pieces here. So you'll see, I just kind of tacked that. So now I have this bow piece. And then this is what becomes the center part of your bow. Okay, so then you're going to want to take your bow piece and just line it up on the edge there and fold it over itself just to make like a little bit of a sandwich so that you can get this center bow piece over both of those um, pieces, the four inch piece and the bow piece. And then you take your tweezers and you kind of wiggle them inside of the center bow and you pull everything through and being very gentle so you don't lose any of your pieces. I've definitely pulled everything too quickly before and you just kind of play with it until you can wiggle everything down to this one and a half inch mark. Like so. And then you just play with it to make it nice and pretty might take a little bit of time, but you'll get it until you get a little cute little bow with a band that looks like this. Okay, so here we have a prepared bow. This is actually, just for reference, this is the half inch double fold bias tape, and this is um, the single fold. Hold on, let me get it just so you can see the difference. Here, I'll put it down on the key fob so you can see the differences there. So you have kind of a littler one and then a bigger one. It just, I guess it comes down to personal preference, whatever you like better, a bigger bow or a smaller bow. But anyways, so the next step is to place, um, is to take your marking tool 
and measure down one and a half inches from the raw edge of one edge. Now this, wherever you mark, that's going to be the top edge of the key fob and the folded edge here. So if you think that this side is prettier and you want that to be your front, um, you'll want to mark over there or if, I don't know. If you think that you know one edge or one side is prettier and needs to be the right side, um, go ahead and determine that now. But um, you mark one and a half inches down. Also, this is going to make a five inch key fob, um, which can be kind of long. I don't know. I guess it's personal preference. So if you wanted to make a shorter one, you totally can. Um, but you're going to adjust where you mark or where you place the bow. So let's say you were going to make, I don't know, a three inch key fob like this. You would want the bow to still be in the top third of the entire length of the key fob so you would mark down maybe only one inch or one and a quarter inch um you maybe just even eyeball it but um so go ahead and adjust the length of the key fob now before you place your bow otherwise when you're finished the bow could end up in an awkward place and it won't be as cute but for a five inch key fob and for all the measurements we've had today um measure down one and a half inches and then place your bow over that dot that you made and you're going to tuck the ends of this little flag into the open book end of the key fob and so you wrap this side around the other end and then tuck it in so what you end up with is the ends of the bias tape being tucked in to the open edge of the um key fob and play around with it so you can get the bow nice and centered and then when you do that hold it nice and tight keep the bow out of the way and use your alligator clip to hold all of that nice and tight so you can see I'm off my mark so I need to move everything up a little bit there we go get this edge tucked in and hold it together with the alligator clip like so and the next step is going to be to sew um, at a quarter of an inch all the way down this edge which will end up closing this completely it'll close it all together and it'll also sew the bow in place but make sure to keep this part of the bow out of the way when you're sewing so just fold that over and sew all the way down here turn at the bottom and then you're also going to top stitch along the folded edge just to provide some kind of symmetry so sew all the way down this edge pivot at the bottom and then sew back up and top stitch the folded edge again making sure to keep that little bow out of the way okay so here i have a completely sewn closed key fob the little bow is attached there and it's top stitched along the folded side you're going to fold it in half so that the raw edges meet. Feel free to press that if you want. And then to use the um, to use the key fob hardware, you just want to take there's a there's a wrong side that has two little triangles in it and a right side that has it's very plain. So you want to make sure that the right side is on the bow. And you literally just position that over the raw edges of the key fob. And then you take your pliers. Now, if you're using regular pliers from the hardware store, make sure to put some felt or something over the edges. This has like a rubber, um, I don't know, casing put on top of it just to prevent any denting or anything messing up the, the actual hardware. But you just take the clamp and you position it close to the edge and carefully clamp down on it just keep pressing and get it really nice and tight on there and there you have your finished key fob now the key fob hardware also comes with a ring so you want to put the ring on the um, the key ring on the edge of the key fob 
like so. And then you will have a really cute and adorable handmade keep up. So there you have it. That's how easy it is to make one of these um, adorable bow key fobs. I really hope that you will be able to make some of these for the teachers in your life. But obviously this is a great gift even outside of Teacher Appreciation Week. So um, hopefully you'll use this tutorial and make someone in your life really happy. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.